Coach Johnson. Well, good morning. Uh, it's exciting to be here and finally be this close to uh, getting a chance to play football again. It's, uh, I think any time you go through the off season and the drudgery of camp, it, you know, for the players and for everybody involved, you're actually looking forward to the games and having a chance to uh, come out and see see what progress you've made. Clearly, the uh, uh, challenge will be huge this Monday. I mean, we've got a uh, heck of an opponent in Virginia Tech, a top 20 team uh, division game on the road. So uh, it'll be, a, be a, a tremendous challenge, but it's also a good opportunity. National TV game and a game against the quality opponent to see where we stand. So having said that, I guess we'll throw it open. And if anybody has questions, try to answer them. I guess the obvious one is um, kind of what's going on with the B-back position. They have uh, Charles starting. Is that injury or performance related? Well, I think it, uh, it's a little bit of all of the above. All those guys have missed practice time. Uh, David, Charles, and Zach have all missed practice time. Uh, the, you know, we tried to base it off what the last week has been. There's, a, there's probably – well, I know that uh, Charles and, and Zach are neck and neck. They're both going to play. Uh, and there's probably a really good chance that David's going to play too. He's he's starting to get better. I don't know that he's 100%. Uh, but he he does have the experience, and we'll just kind of see. I, I would imagine that it'll sort itself out pretty quickly in the game. But based off this week's performance, uh, you know, in practice, Charles probably deserves to be the starter. Coach, Bud Foster's been there for a long time, and you know we know what kind of defenses he usually puts on the field. It's your fifth meeting now with him. Have you seen anything different from them over the years? Or you know, this is one of his, supposedly one of his top defenses he's going to be bringing back. Right. Well, you know, Bud does a great job, and uh, they they always have good defensive players. They're going to play within their system, I would think. They haven't varied from it a great deal, so. Uh, we're going to be within our system. They're going to be within theirs. It's uh, and we'll play. I mean, it's there'll be some tweaks, I'm sure, and some different things that you have to adjust to during the game. Uh, but I don't suspect we'll see a lot of wholesale changes from what they've done the last four times we played. Coach, is the is the be back competition an example of the depth you've talked about and the competitive depth you've got with this football team maybe you didn't have in the first four years? I think so, and I think that that position is fluid. You know, you've got really four to even five guys that have that have had good camps. You know, we could, I could throw Matt Connor in there too. He's had a really good camp. So Roderick Snotty brings some things. Uh, the They all bring something different to the table in this weekend practice. Uh, you know, Charles has probably been a little the best at all of it. Uh, you know, one of them might be the a home run hitter, one of them might be the better runner, one's a better blocker. But overall, he he kind of had the best week. But and like I said, we're planning on going in the game, and you know, we'll see how it goes. But we may even rotate series with he and Zach to start with and see how it goes. But but he'll be the starter. Coach, road games in the conference are always tough. You throw in Blacksburg in a night game, it just adds that difficulty. Have you done anything in practice to emulate the, the crowd you expect and how the kids reacted with that? Yeah, well, we work on crowd noise in practice. And, uh, you know, we're fortunate that we've got the indoor facility so we can pipe, you know, music and noise and stuff in there for the offense. But, uh, uh, you know, you prepare for it, but I, it's different when you get out there. I mean, we, we've done some things. We know we're going to have a hard time here. With Charles, you've touched on a little bit, but has he, has he shown you a little more this past week than, than maybe you've seen in the past? He's done better than the other guys, and that's why he's starting. I mean, it's uh, – you know, I don't know what you guys want me to say about, about the guy. I mean, do you want me to make him like Herschel Walker, and then if he doesn't do good, you come back? Or do you want me to 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 say, well, he's not – I mean, I think he's won the position. He he's a guy that's got good athletic ability. He's a, you know he's shown some toughness. He's fought through some things, and and you know I said two weeks ago when everybody was making a big deal out of the depth chart, then it's fluid. Well, it's still fluid. He just happens to be the starter right now. He he won the job in practice, and that's where you do it. Now, once we start playing the games, we'll get a take, and you know. 
I'm hopeful that Charles will go out there and rush for 200 yards. But we'll see, you, you, you know. Coach, uh, Coach Groh and Coach Kelly have talked a lot about cross-training the, the defensive backs, and now we see uh, Jamal Golden starting at safety, and they talked a little bit about how easy he picks up things. Can you talk a little bit about him starting there? Well, you know, the thing about defense, what you want to do, it's no different than offense. You want to identify your best players and get them on the field. So if you have uh, your five best defensive backs and three of them are corners and two of them are safeties, when one goes down, you want to be able to transition to get that fifth best guy that you believe is the best on the field. So that's that's what you're trying to do. It's no different than having three offensive tackles. Uh, you know, just because a guy's the left offensive tackle at backup don't mean he won't be the first backup for the right offensive tackle if he's better than the other guy. So that's the same thing in the secondary. And, uh, you know, Jamal's been cross-trained. He's played, you know, what we call star nickel position. He's played corner. He's played safety. He's played a lot of it. So have all those guys. You know, Lewis does it when he's out there. Jamia's done it. So you want to try to put the best combination of guys together. Coach, uh, last year Logan Thomas gave you guys fits. What have you? What do you do to keep? What kind of problems does he create? What can you do to try to slow him down? And who did you get to simulate him in practice this week? <laughs> well, I mean, he's a big, uh, versatile, really good athlete. I guess we could have got Emmanuel Diake to simulate him. Uh, he's the only guy we got that's that size. But uh, you know, when you practice, you're really practicing against schemes more so than individuals and what the plays are and what they do. And, uh, you know, hopefully we'll be able to tackle him a little better. We've got to get a lot of people there and wrap up and hang on and and, and see if we can get him down. But, you you know, we don't play him any different than than any other quarterback. And the guy who's uh, simulating this week is Justin Thomas. Coach, what improvements have we seen from Teb in Washington since we've last seen him uh, on the field in Sun Bowl? Well, I think that he's a little more mature. He's probably more comfortable, but we'll see. I mean, we haven't played a game. So it's hard for me to say where has he improved until you play. Uh, you know, in a controlled instance in practice, he's he's done some, some things. But, the uh, you, you know, we'll know fairly quickly this year where he's improved or where he hadn't. I mean, we'll be able to watch and judge. The The thing that uh, this first game, I mean, you're coming out the gate on the road against a defense that's, I think, finished in the top ten last year. And from all, everything I can read coming out of there, they think it may be the best defense they've ever had. And if they are, that'll be really good because they've had some good ones. So, you, you know, we'll have a better take on it after Monday night, I guess. Do you plan on using a rotation at, at tackle? With that? At offensive tackle, defensive tackle, yeah, probably. And have you made a decision on Fred yet, Fred Holton, on whether he'll have I the, done made, made a decision with Fred Holton on whether he'll? Yeah, if he's not in the too deep, there's a pretty good chance he's not going to be playing. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about D.J. White? I know you guys have a lot of young corners, but he seems to be a guy that's kind of made his way up over some a little bit older players into the too deep for you. Yeah, well, I think D.J. is a, a really good athlete. He's a competitor. He he wants to be good. He plays hard. Uh, and we'll see. You know, we're, we're missing a couple guys in the secondary, so they move up on the depth. Will D.J. get in the game? I don't know. Possibly. Uh the uh, again, when you look at the depth, the other corners, you, you know, we might roll people around. Uh, Corey Carlson's probably the next guy in at defensive back, but it just again depends on situations or or what the deal is. So uh, we're preparing DJ to play, and we'll you know go through the first two or three games and see where we are, and if he can help us win, we'll play him. Can you 
talk a little bit about the progress that that uh, Singes made at ABAC from the time camp started till to this point. Well, he's practiced at, at ABAC, and uh, you know he did a little bit of that in the spring at times. But uh, I'm comfortable that he knows where to go and and what to do. So there again, we've never seen him play that position in a live situation. So we'll just have to see. But Singes a good athlete, and. Uh, how much he'll get in will depend on the way the game's playing and different things. So we may use him in some different spots. So it's uh, I think he'll be in the game. You'll see him play Monday night. Where? You know, I don't know. I don't have a set plan to say, okay, he's going to be the second series. He's going to be the left A back or, or whatever. It'll just be kind of a situation. But I'd be really surprised if he doesn't play. You know what the first play is going to be? Do I know what it is? Yeah, yeah probably. <laughs> Are you going to be impressed by it? Probably not. <laughs> um, I guess, do you care to clarify some of the suspensions with guys and kind of who's out in terms of that? It's like who? Who you want to know about? Daniel, Lewis, and I guess Chris Jackson, since he's not on the 2D. Daniel Drummond is suspended. Lewis Young is suspended. Chris Jackson has a eligibility issue at the moment academically. Uh, and that's kind of ongoing. So we'll see. It doesn't have uh, anything to do with his particular uh, grades. It's an hours type deal. Uh, he got caught in a little bit of bind when he transferred with, with the out number of hours that the school will accept. And we thought we were okay. And, uh, you know, right now we're not, he's not. So he may have to miss a couple of games. But uh, we'll know more about it as we get closer, but we're not counting on him in this game. I don't know much more you can explain about that, but it sounds like something that you, you're hoping to get clarified. I don't, I don't know if it's going to get clarified or not. The, you, you know, Basically, there's rules. You have to pass so many hours each semester, and then you have to have a percentage towards graduation, and you have to have all that. We thought that he had what he needed, uh, our academic people and people who are in charge of that thought that he had what he needed, and it turned out he didn't. So. There's an appeals process, and if it goes through, then he'll be back. If not, then he'll have to be, sit out for four games. I'm curious I just found that out on Wednesday myself. So, With the first game like this, you know, both sides have guys that are going to be playing – either they're making their first start or playing their first game, period. Um, is there almost kind of you have to anticipate that some of those guys are, you know, they're going to be making mistakes that, that, you know, six, seven games or, you know, year down the road they're not going to be? I don't know. I think that, you know, there's mistakes in every game. And, and certainly as a coach you worry about the first game and and all those things. And we're not going to – nobody's going to play perfect. We're not, and they probably won't either. Uh, you just hope that you minimize the mistakes – you hope that uh, you know they don't create big plays for the other team, huge plays, <clears throat> and then you just you you move on. Uh, surely you know, and you would think that the guys who have played more will make less mistakes, but that's not always the case. Sometimes it's the guys who have have played a lot. I mean, that's why you play the game. It's you, you don't ever know what's going to happen, and and uh, you know what's the bumper sticker. I can't, you know, that, sometimes it happens. <laughs> yeah. Hey, to follow up on that, Coach, how, in your experience in these first games, especially these first big games, how long does it take for the adrenaline, the excitement kind of just to settle down and then just go through what you do and becomes more a quote-unquote? Probably about the first time you get snot bubbled, you know, and 
and and you get hit and then you kind of settle in and realize and and probably less time for the guys who have played a lot than the guys who this is their first time and and hepped up but uh you know it's going to be a great atmosphere that that's a great place to play their fans do a tremendous job and i'm sure they'll have a, a large crowd and it'll be loud and you know that's why guys come to school at a place like georgia tech so you can play in those kind of games it's fun You have a, a young receiver on the depth chart in Anthony Autry. What are his strengths? Uh, Anthony's a, a, a good athlete. He's got good speed. He comes out of breaks well. Uh, you know, he plays hard. He's, he's raw. We'll see how much he, he plays. You know, if we go into a three-receiver rotation, Darren Waller will be the first guy up. But uh, with the loss of Chris, Anthony's probably going to end up playing some. So, uh We'll try to use him in certain situations and spots, but I've got confidence in Anthony. I think he's a uh, he's got a bright future. Again, you know, till you get in the games, you don't know what's going to happen. But but what we've seen in practice leads me to believe that he's got a, a good career and will be a really good player for us. How will we be handling the handling the returners as far as, far as the bolt? Would it be one guy or rotation, or do you know how that will shake it out? It won't be a rotation. Uh, Unless somebody goes down or or gets hurt, Jamia Thomas is the punt returner. Uh, Orwin Smith and right now Tony Zinnan are the kickoff returners. That could change when you, you know with depth or with injury or whatever. But uh, those are, that that would be the returners right now. <laughs> 